Ladies and gentlemen, we've talked this week about two powerful computational and informatics rooted traditions. On the one hand, system science, and on the, the other, data science. These traditions are both rooted in a conviction that by leveraging the powers of computation that have been afforded to us by the computer revolution, we can gain extra insights into the world. And when applied to health, that we can gain insights into many phenomena that have remained shrouded in mystery or not been able to be probed with previous tools. Yet these traditions have, have almost without exception, been pursued in isolation from one another. Not because of not some underlying incompatibility, but because of the vagaries of, of sociological divides, of limitations in, in the breadth of training, and because of their different origins. <clears throat> I have stood in this very dais and previously argued um, to you four days ago that these two traditions are compatible. But more than compatible, that these two traditions are synergistic, that each benefits materially from the other. And by combining both, we gain something that is greater than the sum of the parts. Each helps the other achieve extra capacities. With system science, we can work to improve data science, informing our understanding of what data we need to collect, how to prioritize our data collection helping our, our data collected through data science lenses from growing numbers of new types of high resolution data, of high resolution data, data offering the four Vs of volume, velocity, veracity, and variety, to help that data go further, to illuminate the underlying systems that, system, that data science has aspired to explore. Without system science, I would argue that goal is almost hopeless. With system science, it's a goal that can be achieved. And similarly, on the flip side, with data science, we can help system science achieve its, its potential as well by allowing us to, to ground our theory in observation to test our theory in the crucible of rich data sources of, of empirical nature by which we can challenge our cherished preconceptions and build a theory more responsive to what we see from the world. And by so doing, to not privilege the data collected by the world as, as somehow sacrosanct, but instead to provide us the insights about how we can change things for the better that forms a, a key tradition within system science. How we can change that data, data generating process to yield a better outcome, to bend the curves, to lower the burdens associated with, uh, with uh, health disparities, with health inequities to lower the burdens that, that uh, are felt so keenly in society with respect to so many health challenges. And to grapple with those health challenges that are, that are at once most vexing and on the other so poorly able to be managed. System science can benefit particularly in its aspiration 
to resolve different generative pathways to action, to the effects of intervention, to those interventions which do change the patterns in the world. By testing those effects that we expect to see from a model against what's observed with uh, empirical data across multiple pathways. And it's this capacity to increasingly illuminate um, uh, these causal pathways that support our ability to, to build theory, to inform and challenge theory, and our ability to ground models that will take us out of a backwards looking stance where we're relying on data collected in the past and into a situation where we can increasingly craft ourselves towards healthier futures. These two traditions, in short, need each other. These two traditions benefit from each other. These two, two traditions require each other to achieve their full potential. This is not some theoretical musings, but in fact reflects the growing number of, of tools of methodologies and of techniques that we have to which we enjoy recourse. During this week, we've explored a set of these techniques, from hidden Markov models to particle filters to particle MCMC and its supporting technique of MCMC. To cross the convergent cross mapping that help us take data from the world and make sense of it in terms of what it tells us about underlying systems. And this has required thinking about data from multiple sources, not as solitudes, not as, as fragmented sets of, of numbers but as different facets, different faces of an, underlying, of, of an underlying system that has a unity to it. Of an underlying coupled system where any one data source whispers of the others. And where taken together with a model, we can illuminate areas of the system for which we have no direct measurement. And rightly, rightly applied, this can help realize much of the goals of, of data science. Because data science should not crucify us on this cross of measurability, where we only have measurements on the things which happen to be readily measurable, and we neglect things of such importance outside of that. That, that puts us on a path as King Lear said, towards madness. It's like the drunk looking for their keys where the light is. Benighted to the fact that the keys are just as likely to be, to be outside in the surrounding darkness. Data science with system science together with it can allow data sources to illuminate a much broader set of issues and much, provide a much richer picture, and provide for a picture that transcends itself in the sense of allowing us to investigate counterfactuals, the effects of counterfactuals, and to ground that potential in evidence, but at the same time allow us to, to consider changes that will change that data generating process. In short, it allows us to make data science not merely backwards looking, operating on data on a process as if we're looking at a rear view, rear, rear view mirror based on data corrected in the past, but provides it that avenue to look forward even with changing circumstance, with interventions we put into place. And these methods that we've seen variously for different circumstances provide a concrete means of accomplishing much of that. Methods we haven't been able to talk much about, whether it's Bayesian hierarchical modeling, structural equation modeling, deep learning, 
They have big, big avenues there too. But we must avoid being caught up, in my belief, in a view that truth will come by looking on our back view mirror and just recognizing patterns that have occurred. Because as thinking beings and as a society, we owe it to ourselves to do better than the past, to improve things. And data, and that changes, as we saw in our very first example, the patterns that we see from the world. Data provides great insights, but it provides great insights when used, particular insights when used best with models that will tell us how things are likely to change in the future with change circumstance. Without that, it tends to be contingent upon the, uh, its relevance tends to be contingent upon the observed patterns which are already present. So I would argue whilst this is a, a first tentative, even wavering step in the direction of, of a synthesis of these two approaches, it's a very important philosophical perspective to take. We will not secure truth anymore from purely from operating on data in the past and reasoning about data in the past and recognizing patterns in the past that will not secure for us a reliable future any more than will a bottle of wine. We owe it to ourselves to, to combine that with models that, that, that help us make broader sense of that data to areas not measured, and most uh, importantly address that key area not measured, which is a future that is different in terms of its data generating process. Whilst it's great to, to operate with methods that operate on past data for simple recognition tasks, for classification, for reasoning about small pieces of the system, we do well to think about combining it with mechanisms that allow us to ask those key what if questions when it comes to the sphere of human decision making. And that is what this boot camp has been about at a bigger levels whether it's the new types of data sources or the many types of, of methods examined, they point us towards a richer future in which our decision making can be informed by data collected, in which our choices can be illuminated by what's been collected in the past while not straightjacketing us to us to repeat it. The methods seen here will, will evolve. The data sources that we examine will evolve. There's many details to get this right, and this is a wide open vista, like the province that surrounds us. We, when we come together for future events like this, um, there'll be new methods yet uh, applied, and the methods that we have seen will be supported by better and better accessibility. We're trying to provide the tools to allow others to follow this road, which is so promising for ourselves. And um, I'm hoping the resources that we provide to you will provide you that avenue to undertake that journey, if not on your own, at least with less burden. We're going to try to provide those, uh, uh, those uh, extra bits of code, those extra models, those references to extra resources uh, so that you can more easily read up, consult, or adapt those sorts of resources. So this is a fast, uh, fast changing environment, but it's one that that even now offers such manifest promise that it's not to be ignored. I hope this week has provided you some glimpse of the potential of these methods, um, some hints as to promising avenues, and some thoughtful reflections on the nature of data, the nature of underlying systems, and the nature of interventions.
It's been my tremendous privilege, pleasure, and honor to be with you and to spend with you this time to explore this this uh, process, um, explore this this set of topics, which, to the best of my knowledge, have never been talked about elsewhere. I'm so grateful to you for having accommodated my um, the fact that this is the first such workshop. It's the first such attempt to articulate many of these principles, many of these, uh, these, these types of methods. Many of the slides which I presented have been built, in some cases, in white heat and frenzy for this week. And I'm, I, I'm so grateful to you for your accommodation of their limited, um, limited character and um, of, of the, uh, the limitations and their capacity to communicate some of these factors. I will continue to post on these areas and um, on the basis of this event, it seems clear to me that I have a date with destiny with another such event in the not too distant future. And I will tell you, your presence here has made it such a pleasure, such a pleasure to be able to offer this. Um, and uh, I hope that you secured um, some modicum of, of enjoyment uh, from the week in wintry Saskatchewan as much as I have. So uh, those are all my uh, concluding remarks. I want to thank you so much. I'd be happy to, uh, to chat informally with you. Um, but I hope that you will um, forgive me if I do so from a sitting posture. <laughs> because my weary frame <laughs> needs sucker. OK? Thank you very much.